deception because it plays on human pride. It is the driving force behind ideas such as morality is relative and karma. It is the denial of evil and accountability to sin. This is the core of the Luciferian doctrine. It is the blueprint to what the select group of men have been working on for centuries. Exclusive knowledge to achieve immortality and become gods, all without the help of the Creator God, but by our own use of intellect. As we will come to see, this idea, which goes by many names like the Sacred Promise and an Ancient Hope, has been sought after by men for centuries. Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor for the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land, every secret brotherhood, every secret society, Every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. I believe and there's, if you read esoteric wisdom philosophers and teachers and so on, this ancient hope is the idea that there has been a, a plan, an ambition, contained within secret societies for thousands of years to resurrect the lost empire of Atlantis. Uh, and for those who don't know, the whole idea of the new Atlantis and the new world order and the new order of the ages are, if you read the writings of these societies, they are all one and the same thing. The ancient hope, of which Bush refers to in his second inauguration speech, demonstrates that Bush, or at the very least the authors of his speech, are well aware of the plan initiated by an ancient occult hierarchy, now operating as secret societies to forge a world empire. The promise to those who help build this empire is that they will attain godhood themselves and become a part of a family of perfected human beings. Manly P. Hall, a 33-degree Freemason, an occultist and regarded as one of the greatest authorities on the topic of secret societies and Freemasonry in particular, reveals in his book, The Secret Destiny of America, quote, In this way, the old dream of the philosophic empire descended from the ancient world to modern time. Secret societies still exist, and regardless of the intemperance of the times, they will continue to flourish until the quest is complete. For more than 3,000 years, secret societies have labored to create the background of knowledge necessary to the establishment of an enlightened democracy among the nations of the world." End quote. Hall goes on to explain that America was not founded as a constitutional republic based on biblical principles, but rather a massive experiment of social engineering formed out of the principal visions described in Sir Francis Bacon's book, The New Atlantis, in 1627. The basic principle was that the goal of attaining human perfection and a utopia that would come with it is the ultimate plan put forth and worked on since antiquity. He goes on to say, quote, The supreme human purpose is the perfection of man. This must come first, and when this end has been achieved, all good things will inevitably follow, end quote. These principles all stem back from what is known as the ancient mystery school teachings. The ancient mystery school teachings is an esoteric, 
spiritual wisdom and philosophy passed down by the initiated elite for centuries. It is in fact one and the same as the Luciferian doctrine that one day man will become God through the use of his own intellect. This is the religion of the New World Order, which is operating in various degrees under various secret societies, cults, and even high-ranking religious circles. The origin and understanding of the mystery schools and its history can be found in theosophical writings. Keith Thompson, in his film Aquarius, Age of Evil, does a full expose on the founding of theosophy, its connection to secret societies, the New Age movement, zeitgeist, and ultimately the New World Order. In a document entitled The Mystery Schools, written by Grace Noach of the Theosophical Society, reveals the origin of the ancient mystery teachings. She opens the document, quote, Millions upon millions of years ago, in the darkness of prehistory, humanity was an infant, a child of Mother Nature, unawakened, dreamlike, wrapped in the cloak of mental somnolence. Recognition of egoity slept, instinctual consciousness alone was active. Like a stream of brilliance across the horizon of time, divine beings, Manasaputras, sons of mind, descended among the sleeping humans, and with the flame of intellectual solar fire lighted the wick of latent mind, and lo, the thinker stirred. Self-consciousness wakened, and man became a dynamo of intellectual and emotional power, capable of love, of hate, of glory, of defeat. Having knowledge, he acquired power. Acquiring power, he chose. Choosing, he fashioned the fabric of his future, and the perception of this ran like wine through his veins." End quote. She goes on to explain the Atlantean connection as, quote, Time marched on and the race waxed lustily in power. As Lumeria gave birth to Atlantis, the third race to the fourth, the fiercest battle was waged, the war between the lords of light and truth and the lords of darkness and ignorance. Thus were established some four or five million years ago, when Atlantis was threatening to destroy itself through spiritual iniquity, the first mystery schools. From these early centers sprang other mystery schools in all parts of the Atlantean world. By the time the Atlanteans were in their heyday of material splendor, these schools were working their hardest to stem the increasing tide of sorcery." End quote. H. P. Blavatsky, founder of Theosophy and touted as one of the greatest writers on the topic of the occult and esoteric wisdom, stated that her book, The Secret Doctrine, is the re-emergence of the ancient mystery school teachings, as quote, The secret doctrine is the accumulated wisdom of all ages, the mysterious power of occult symbolism, that the facts which have actually occupied countless generations of initiated seers and prophets to marshal, to set down and explain in the bewildering series of evolutionary progress. It is the uninterrupted record covering thousands of generations of seers whose respective experiences were made to test and to verify the traditions passed orally by one early race to another of the teachings of higher and exalted beings who watch over the childhood of humanity." End quote. Alice Bailey, a theosophist and writer, co-founder of Lucius Trust, formerly known as Lucifer Publishing, wrote in her occult classic known as The Externalization of the Hierarchy regarding the initiation of all humanity into the ancient mystery schools as, quote, This little-known divine energy now streams out from Shambhala. It embodies in itself the energy which lies behind the world crisis of the moment. It is the will of God to produce certain racial and momentous changes in the consciousness of the race which will completely alter man's attitude to life and his grasp of the spiritual, esoteric, and subjective essentials of living. It is this force which will bring about, in conjunction with the energy of love, that tremendous crisis imminent in the human consciousness, which we call the second crisis, the initiation of the race into the mystery of the ages, into that which has been hid from the beginning." End quote. The foundation behind all that is the ancient mystery school teachings are founded upon the idea that, once again, man was given the gift of creativity and intellect so that we ourselves can achieve godhood and become the divine beings of which we were supposed to be through the process of evolution. This idea goes directly against biblical Christianity, who offers salvation to anyone who believes in Jesus Christ. This is why the modern era writers on the topic of the ancient mysteries go to great lengths to try to discredit Christianity and why secret societies have infiltrated its religious institutions to corrupt many sectors of Christianity, allowing historians to paint a picture of the faith which is utterly false. Most of the attempted discrediting of Christianity in these writings 
refer to the idea that was presented in the first section of the film Zeitgeist. In fact, it is my belief that Zeitgeist is the carrying out of what Alice Bailey referred to as the initiation of the race into the mystery of the ages. Bailey in the same book, Externalization of the Hierarchy, goes on to describe her opinion about Christianity as quote, Christianity must also be overthrown because it is based on Jewish sources. The rule of Christ must come to an end because only the rule of force is right. In the world order of the Axis powers, the individual has no rights, has no freedom except insofar as he serves the state. There will be no liberty of thought or conscience. All issues will be decided by the state, and the private citizen will have no right to an opinion. Men will be drafted like slaves into the service of the state." End quote. Bailey goes on to explain the origins of Jesus in her view as, quote, to this everlasting compassion, the cyclic appearance of the sun gods of the ancient myths, the world saviors and the avatars bear witness and are the guarantee." End quote. Albert Pike shows his opinion on Christianity and morals and dogma, stating, quote, "...the teachers, even of Christianity, are in general the most ignorant of the true meaning of that which they teach. There is no book of which so little is known as the Bible. To most who read it, it is as incomprehensible as the Zohar." End quote. This idea of sun worship is part of the mystery school teachings and has been the crutch of these esoteric wisdom writings in the last few centuries attempting to explain the misunderstanding of biblical Christianity and the man of Jesus. Manly P. Hall refers to the sun in regards to Jesus, quote, The adoration of the sun was one of the earliest and most natural forms of religious expression. From a deep philosophic consideration of the powers and principles of the sun has come the concept of the Trinity as it is understood in the world today. This orb, being the symbol of all light, has three distinct phases, rising, midday, and setting. The coming of the sun was hailed with joy. The time of its departure was viewed as a period to be set aside for sorrow and unhappiness. This glorious radiant orb of day, the true light which lighteth every man who cometh into the world, the supreme benefactor who raised all things from the dead, who fed the hungry multitudes, who stilled the tempest, who after dying rose again and restored all things to life. This supreme spirit of humanitarianism and philanthropy is known to Christendom as Christ, the Redeemer of worlds, and only begotten of the Father, the Word made flesh, and the hope of glory." End quote. Not surprisingly, Helena Blavatsky also refers to astronomical underpinnings of Christianity, quote, It is useless and vain for the Protestants to explain against the Roman Catholics for their mariolatry based on the ancient cult of lunar goddesses when they themselves worship Jehovah, preeminently a lunar god, and when both churches have accepted in their theologies the Son Christ of the Lunar Trinity, end quote. So according to these writers, which in essence is what Peter Joseph did in the first section of his film Zeitgeist, is that what Christians have been doing for centuries was actually worshipping the sun and the stars rather than God and Jesus Christ. What's interesting to note is that a single verse in the Bible can explain that this is simply not the case. In 2 Kings 23.5, it states, quote, He did away with the pagan priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem, those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and moon, to the constellations, and to all the starry hosts." End quote. The ideas and opinions which permeate through society now in regards to Christianity are a residue to what we see in the esoteric writings. Even if the majority of the people who hate fundamental Christianity and religion in general are not aware of the specific assaults made by the theosophical authors, the basic attitude towards Jesus, his message, and to all Christians who believe and follow him are consistent. So who is the god of the ancient mystery schools? The theosophical society is Luciferianism at its core. It is openly satanic in the case of Blavatsky, certainly Luciferianism in the case of Alice Bailey. They are exalting Lucifer. He is the god of this world, the planetary logos. He is the voice of God in the Bible, according to Alice Bailey. Lucifer is God, and I think that the New World Order philosophy and how that connects is clearly 
tied to Luciferianism, the exaltation of Lucifer as God, even if um, the lower levels of globalization in the New World Order only view that in terms of a principle. For example, the ideas of Prometheus and the light bearer and the torch and all these kinds of things that the Garden of Eden you know, thing was a good thing, that uh, knowledge was, was given to us and uh, by a great and awesome being, even if they only view it as sort of allegory, that idea is Luciferianism, the exaltation of Lucifer in the Bible as a good thing, even if they don't completely view him as God. So Luciferianism is the core of theosophical philosophy, and it's also the core of the New World Order, which again makes perfect sense to the overall thesis here that what they're doing is building up a, a, a platform to worship him. So 